good afternoon. I'm Wouter Verschoof van der Vaart. So we can practice that all later. Um, since June 2017, I'm a PhD researcher on the supervision of uh, Karsten Lambers and uh, Dr. Michael Liu in the data science research program at uh, the Faculty of Archaeology and Faculty of uh, Data Science, the Leiden Center of Data Science, as it is officially called, at Leiden University. And so uh, the data science research program, just to go a little bit into that, is a collaboration between all the faculties from Leiden University um, and the newly formed uh, Leiden Data Science Center. And the idea behind this uh, collaboration is that every faculty has two PhDs within the program that are all working on big data problems um, within their own field but use the same methods and techniques so that we can share our um, problems and our solutions. Um, so my research project um, will explore the implementation of advanced computational methods to develop a generic, flexible and robust um, detection method for archaeological objects in remotely sensed data. Um, more specifically, I am developing a workflow to uh, detect archaeological objects within LIDAR data. Um, so the objects we have been looking for in our first experiments were Barrow's Celtic fields, so the Iron Age field systems, as we are now have to call them, and the charcoal kids. Um, so what I would like to do today is take you through my workflow. Um, I will first talk about the actual input of the workflow, the LiDAR data, and the research area where this LiDAR data is derived from. Um, then I will discuss the visualization I have used and the resulting data set that was used to train, validate, and test the model. Then I will talk about the actual CNN model we have used, faster RCNN, and what changes were made to this model to make it better compatible with our data. I will show some of the first results and we will end with some future developments also within the research project. So the research area here uh, highlighted is in uh, the central part of the Netherlands. Um, it's a forested area and it covers about 5% of the total area of the Netherlands. And so we are very fortunate in the Netherlands because uh, for the entire Netherlands we have uh, interpolated LiDAR data available, which is called the AHN, at the Actueel Hoogbestand Nederland. And this has an average 6 to 10 ground points per square meter and a 50 centimeter resolution. Um, it's freely available online through uh, the repository table. Um, <coughs> so this data is normally disseminated in tiles measuring a 6 and a quarter by uh, five kilometers, so that's 12,500 by 10,000 pixels. That's important for later. Um, so our research area is uh, 75 of these tiles and um, it covers about 2,350 square kilometer. And so for my initial experiments, I used um, some uh, training areas here in blue, a validation area in yellow and a testing area in red. And these specific areas were chosen um, because of uh, the known archaeology within these regions and also the amount of known archaeology and uh, because of the research that has been done by our faculty in the past. The blue areas um, were the three main areas of research in the PhD research of Dr. Fontaine Bourgeois. Uh, on barrel landscapes and also our, our faculty has been doing barrel excavations here since 2006 in the Ancestral Mounds project and in the Network Landscapes project. Um, so the first step within the workflow was to uh, visualize the LIDAR data and in the Netherlands LIDAR data is normally visualized in hill shade or in shaded relief. Uh, however, mostly based on the work of uh, Kokal and Hesse, all the visualization techniques were tried and some were found to be better suited for our research area and the archaeological objects we were looking for. So eventually we decided to use local relief model or simple local relief model from the RTV uh, toolbox. Um, so the next step was to build a data set 
with the training of validation and testing sub data sets. And the data set was developed to be uh, comparable in image size and in organization to a well known object classification data set, Pascal Vox. And Pascal Vox is regularly used as a sort of benchmark data set for neural networks. And also, most off the shelf neural networks can use. Uh, data set that has been structured in the way as Pascal Fox. Um, therefore, all the light data was put into QGIS and was further split into subtiles measuring 1000 by 600 pixels. Um, this is also the size of the images in Pascal Fox. Um, all known archaeology from the regions, from several different databases, was plotted on the LiDAR data and tiles were selected with known archaeology. Um, these were substantially uh, labeled in LabelImage, which is a small program also designed to make data sets comparable to Pascal Fox. Um, so we have a total of 470 of these subtiles images split into a training data set of 365 images. A validation set of 41 images that was used to monitor the model during training, mostly to see if it was overfitting or not, and a testing data set of 74 images. However, during the uh, development of the data set, one of the problems we ran into was that although this area has been surveyed quite extensively in the past, a lot of new archaeology was found. So prior to um, the making of the data set, about 900 barrels were known. This is just the northern part of the research area. But after making the data set, about 100, 750 potential new barrels were found. You can see them here in yellow. And so um, this huge amount of potential new barrels, and also the problem of how are we going to survey those, is um, the subject of a um, workshop that will be organized late this year by Carsten Lambers and uh, Quentin Bourgeois on using uh, citizen science to basically let the public survey these barrows and um, then use the results within this research project. Um, also, some archaeology was found that prior to this was only very sporadically documented, such as these charcoal kilns, and these were then later also incorporated into my data set. Um, also some chant finds were found, such as this potential Roman marching camp next to two new barrows. Um, these new barrows have been recently confirmed by Corings, by Contem Bouzrah and myself, and the Roman marching camp will be investigated later this year. So, um, after we make the data set, we could start training a model and from the outset we decided we wanted to use a pre-trained CNN because of the clear advantages of transfer learning on small data sets. However, a normal CNN is an image classifier for every input image it gives a single classification. And for our research project uh, we want to look at different types of archaeology within one LiDAR image and also these um, these objects, for instance, barrels and catafees, might be very close together or even overlapping, especially if later on we add more classes of, for instance, medieval archaeology. Uh, so a possible solution to this problem is uh, regions with CNN, and this type of neural network not only classifies uh, parts of an image, but also gives the location within the image, most of the time by a bounding box with a class label. So, uh, FASA RCNN is one of the latest implementations of such an RCNN, and, and this uh, type of network is built up from a, a normal CNN, in this case ResNet 50 or VGG16, but uh, one of the feature layers is taken and fed into our region proposal network, which is a smaller neural network that um, uses a um, a sort of sliding window and place anchor points and the uh, distance between the sliding window is called the stride and on these um, anchor points it places uh, certain bounding boxes anchor boxes and the size of these are also predefined um, 
these um, uh, anchor boxes called regions of interest or ROIs are fed into a classifier together with the feature map and they are then pulled and individually classified. Um, so several changes were made to foster our CNN to make it better compatible to our data sets. Um, the anchor box sizes were reduced to better cope with the small objects in the data sets. Uh, the number of training rounds, so EPOS, was lowered because of overfitting the problem where the model uh, starts to uh, just memorize the training examples and doesn't um, yeah, work very well on new situations. Uh, also, validation step was uh, implemented to also monitor the overfitting. Uh, data augmentation was also used, in this case, horizontal and vertical flip. So we transfer learned uh, free trade faster RCNN on our data sets. We use both RefNet 50 and VGG 16, and uh, we tested it on the testing data sets. And um, due to the small data set, we were only able to train the network for about 80 epochs or training rounds before it started to overfit. However, the first experiments show that the model is able to detect barrows as well as Celtic fields. Um, and also that it is possible to detect Celtic fields and barrows within one image. However, the problem is still, well, the model is still far from perfect and sometimes it's just wrong, such as in this case where a roundabout has been marked as a barrel with quite some confidence. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the results of the first set of experiments uh, shows that faster RCNN uh, can be used as a multi-class object detector for archaeological objects within lighter data. So the best F1 scores uh, of the first experiments are around 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And so the F1 score is a measure of the accuracy of the model um, and is a main of the precision and recall with zero being the worst and one being the best. Um, so what are now the next steps within our research project? Well, the first step is to further improve the model and also incorporate more classes. Uh, by uh, revising the model, such as uh, lowering the stride of the uh, model, um, changing the uh, anchor boxes, sizes, and implement additional data augmentation. Also, one of the things that might be uh, interesting to test is see if pre-training the model on a data set that's more comparable to the lighter data might give better results. Uh, another step is to enlarge the data set, also by the citizen science project and also by doing ground proofing within the field, um, possibly by our faculty staff. Um, also, one of the things I'm going to work on in the near future is to develop a BBOX localizer tool or BLT. And um, this tool um, will be used to better implement the results within a GIS environment. The um, data that goes into the model has positional data attached to it, so it has real-world coordinates, but it loses those when it goes through the model. And so the resulting boundary boxes also don't have real-world coordinates, but local coordinates. And what I want to do is, uh, with the VBOX localizer tool, um, convert these local coordinates back into real-world coordinates so that these can directly be put into a GIS environment. And furthermore, we also want to improve the workflow by automating certain parts of it and um, uh, incorporating several parts of it within one or two programs. Um, so in the long run, we want to develop at least two more of these workflows. So this first workflow was really a proof of concept, like can we use faster RCNN on LiDAR data? Um, so the second workflow will mostly be an improvement of the first one and will also then be used on the remainder of research area. Um, what I also want to do is uh, see if we can use this on a different test case, preferably also in a different type of landscape too see how generic the model is. Uh, the third workflow, I want to use a completely different type of data 
set. So different data type, for instance, aerial photography or so. Um, so I would lastly like to bring up a point for the general discussion. Uh, is there any interest in a shared data set of remotely sensed images with labeled archaeological objects? And if so, I hope so. Uh, how are we going to develop structure and maintain such a data set? So thank you very much.